downtown Detroit. Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Storms may be moving out, but another issue on the horizon, the forewarned weather team tracking an air quality alert for much of southeast Michigan. Tomorrow's conditions could cause problems for people who have respiratory issues. So we'll start there at 11. Good to have you with us. I'm Devin Skillian. And I'm Devon Fernandez in for Kimberly Gill. Let's get right over to Ron Hilliard in for Kim Adams in tonight with a look at what to expect. Hey there, Ron. Hey, so we do have some concerns out there about the air quality tomorrow. And we right now have some concerns about flooding in our area. That includes parts of Genesee, Livingston and Oakland counties because of all that rain that we've had throughout the day. Some of the communities in that advisory area include Argentine Township, the Fenton area, Holly, as you get into Harlan and even parts of Highland Township. So again, that goes until a little bit longer. Just at midnight, we will see that expiring, but there could still be some water on the roadways. Here's the Zach Track 40 radars. A lot of us missed the rainfall altogether today, but we're still seeing it in parts of Livingston County, also seeing it right now in the Ann Arbor area as you get over toward Manchester. We're seeing that rain coming on down in Chelsea, getting that rain right now as well. So here's what you need to keep in mind. It is very difficult to see the rainfall at night. We picked up anywhere from two to four inches in some of these areas, such as the Fenton area. You want to make sure that you are being very cognizant of where you're driving and where you're walking. It takes just six inches of water to sweep a person away, just a foot of water to sweep away a small car. We're going to talk more about the flood concerns tonight, as well as the air quality alert that's in effect for tomorrow. Noot 11, a man is in custody in connection to the death of his grandmother. Deputies came to a home on West Warner Street in Ypsilanti Township for a welfare check. They found the 73-year-old grandmother in a shallow grave in the backyard. Her 29-year-old grandson was arrested and charges are pending. Well, another smoke shop is shut down. This time, police say it was for selling marijuana without a license. We're talking about the Vapes on Point, which is on East Warren. Jacqueline Francis live tonight at the shop to take us through what we know so far is another uprising of the community, right, Jacqueline? That's right. Just take a look here at the door, the orange sign sealing the door shut, letting people know that this shop has been shut down. And police tell us it was a tip from the community that got them here. It's become a familiar sight in Detroit. Another smoke shop shut down and the community had a part in it. We're not having this, not with our children. Deborah Underwood was the whistleblower. A great nephew came up here and made some purchases. 14 years old, weed, edibles, vape pen. Deborah got community activists and police involved. ICE unit did a subsequent investigation and was able to purchase some marijuana items from this location, uh, at which time uh, we made some arrests, effected a search warrant, and we had to effectively BC close down the building. Vapes on Point, located on Detroit's east side, is not licensed to sell marijuana of any kind, regardless of the customer's age. Police did the right thing in responding immediately. We don't do this for theatrics. This is the fifth smoke shop or gas station to furry Brent and his team have helped shut down. There may be 500 more. You know, that's what it takes to get these people to stop selling poison to our children. So what happens from here for the business? Police tell us there's a lot of obstacles they have to go to through different departments, possibly fines, all of that just to potentially reopen. Reporting live in Detroit, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. You got it. All right, Jacqueline. Tonight, two Detroit police officers are off the job after being charged with child abuse in Flint. Now, prosecutors say they've charged Jared and Liana Shaw with four felonies and two misdemeanors for allegedly putting a 12 year old and 15 year old in chokeholds. Now, the victims are Liana Shaw's children. Jared is their stepfather. Chief James White says he's filing paperwork to have the officers suspended without pay until an internal affairs investigation is completed. Now, sources tell us both officers were placed on a tether. They'll be back in court May 30th. Tonight, the UAW has pushed to unionize Southern auto factories just hit a brick wall. Workers at two Mercedes plants in Alabama have voted no on UAW membership. Let's bring in Mar McDonald, who's live at Solidarity House tonight. Uh, it puts plans uh, to move to other plants in the South, especially in Alabama, probably on ice tonight, Mara. Well, Devin, I mean, as you well know, as you know, after the UAW won those historic gains in those contracts for the Detroit Three for those workers, Sean Fain came out and was very clear and very loud. I'm going to go out and I'm going to unionize every single auto factory in this country. Well, what's happened tonight definitely slows that roll. Let me show you. 
In the end, it wasn't close. Two Mercedes factories in Tuscaloosa voted 56 against to 44 percent in favor of joining the UAW. This law stings. While this law stings, I'll be tell you this, you know, we're going to keep our heads up, keep our heads held high. Um, these workers have nothing to do but be proud of the effort they put forth and what they've done. Um, we fought the good fight. The UAW wasn't just fighting the automaker, but the political power structure in Alabama, including the governor, who came out and said allowing the UAW in would kill off auto investment in that state, which has become a major factory destination. Fain made clear after his successful campaign brought massive gains for Detroit Three Workers that his intention was to unionize all the autos, including Tesla. So far, he's managed to get Volkswagen workers in Tennessee on board, but Alabama? has brought those plans to a standstill for now. It's a David versus Goliath fight. Um, you know, sometimes Goliath wins a battle, but ultimately David will win the war. Back here live, that sure sounds like the UAW is getting ready to retool its strategy because remember, it's not just Mercedes Benz in Alabama, it's Honda and it's Hyundai. We're live tonight on Detroit's East Side at Solidarity House. Amara McDonald. So right, target rich environment for the UAW. All right, Amara. Ascension Hospital says it's making progress when it comes to bringing systems back online. Now, this is all after that cyber attack we told you about earlier this month. The company says hospitals, physicians' offices, and care sites remain open right now. Teams are working with patients whose appointments need to be rescheduled. Unless instructed otherwise, patients are being advised to attend appointments as scheduled. The investigation into that hack continues. First Lady Jill Biden and the second gentleman Doug Imhoff continued their visit to Michigan. The pair met this afternoon with uh, leaders from the Sioux St. Marie community. In fact, they toured the Sioux Locks, so that's a real Michigan visit. The visit by Biden and Imhoff uh, was there to highlight the administration's investment of $3.2 billion proposed for construction of a new lock in the Sioux. President Biden signed legislation in 2022, which included the multi-billion dollar investment that connects Lake Superior with Lake Huron. Meanwhile, President Biden expected to be in Detroit this weekend. He will be the keynote speaker at the NAACP's 69th annual Fight for Freedom Fund dinner. NAACP is expected to honor Biden with the James Weldon Johnson Lifetime Achievement Award. And U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow is going to receive the organization's presidential award. Dinner takes place this Sunday at Huntington Place in downtown Detroit. Metro Detroit's longest running comic book and pop culture convention back in Novi this weekend. Yeah, this should be fun. Motor yeah. City Comic Con has been a staple since 1989. Now, people come to share their love of comics and pop culture. There are celebrity guests doing photo ops and autographs like Ernie Hudson from <laughs> Ghostbusters, Giancarlo Esposito from Breaking Bad and The Mandalorian, to M. Kenny, who voices Sp uh, SpongeBob, and even Star Trek actor William Shatner. No Motor City Comic Con continues tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Is there a bigger guest than William Shatner in this world for those, these kind of events? I don't think. 93 years old. Exactly. Amazing. $45 for adults, $10 for kids ages 6 to 12. Uh, children under 5 get in for free. Then on Sunday, uh, the hours are 10 to 5, $40 for adults, free for all the kids who are 12 and under. Uh, some of our team went there today. They're telling us the convention has added a lot of great food trucks. Always a good sign. And our Brian Sherman will be there reporting live tomorrow morning starting at 6 a.m.